Hey guys, welcome back to Celebrate the Struggle. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Hobbs, your host, and I am here with Corey Scheidler today, a fellow veteran. Can't really put a specific on it because he's just trying out the Air Force and the Army to see, you know, just do his service. And so he has time in both of them, which we will talk more about. But now his journey has taken him to where he is a behavior change health coach, and he is the owner of Core Fitness. Welcome, Corey. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it as well. And I absolutely love the title behavior change health coach, because I mean, from what I know, and I know you're probably far more educated in it and experienced, but when it comes to health and life changes, that's all about behavior. That's not just about fitness. So let's back it up a little bit. As I was mentioning in the introduction, you know, you were in the Air Force and the Army. So kind of share with us your journey and kind of where it started. Anything you want to share with us, like how it's gotten you to this point, And then we'll talk more about uh, now and, and what things look like for you and the people you are serving and how you're making a difference nowadays. So tell us a little bit about your journey and what's brought you to this point. Sure. Well, I started out, I wanted to go into physical therapy. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to university of Nebraska and, uh, studied exercise science. And, uh, after four years, I just determined that like, physical therapy probably wasn't in the cards for me. So I got a job as a, as a personal trainer and started working as a personal trainer. And about that same time, um, I was actually in the Army National Guard, like yourself. Um, and I was uh, doing both and really decided I liked um, doing the personal training. And, uh, and just continued with that. I got a job as a fitness director and so on and so forth. And, you know, I noticed that a lot of my clients needed to, they, they needed to do more than just learn how to work out. They really needed to, to learn how to change their lives and change their lifestyle. And that really starts up here. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so when I saw the, the certification for the behavior change health specialist uh, came out, I thought that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. No kidding. Um, that is so a strong say I see I didn't even know that there was a certification for behavior change health coach which I'm not surprised about you know since it's not you know um an industry that I went into and so I don't know all the certifications but you make a very strong statement and a perfect point that nails it with it all starts up here and that you were able to identify that in people so so you had did you join the military prior to going to school or did you join during? No, I actually joined before. Um, you know, I was one of those that, you know, I, it was a bit embarrassing, but I needed school. I need money for school. So I raised my right hand and said, no shame in that. <laughs> bring me on in. And I uh, ended up loving it. I saved 20 years. So, um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I, I really miss it. I've been out now four years and, and, uh, but I'd probably go back if someone asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear yeah, that? Right. <laughs> four years? Yeah. Four years is fresh. You know, I feel yeah. I've been out, uh, since 2010, so 12 years and it doesn't seem like 12 years. And there are definitely things that I miss, especially that, that camaraderie and that connection with those, uh, mm -hmm. individuals. Um, so as you are the owner of core fitness, how did you, um, get the, like, clearly you've had the drive to help other people going into looking at physical therapy and then becoming a trainer, but people don't just wake up one day and like, Oh, I'm going to open up court. You know, I'm going to open up my own business and they're successful at that. It takes a lot of struggle and a lot of determination and resiliency. So can you tell us kind of about your resiliency that way we could put it out there in this space. And for anyone who's even thinking about whether it's helping people with their health or mental health or insurance, anything like to kind of help them get away from that fear of, um, uh, everything, all the challenges that will come your way. So how did that, as you became, got certified, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. 
so we moved from Nebraska to Arizona in 2000. And um, I, I told my wife, listen, I'm, I'm going to go into business for myself. Uh, it's time. I've always loved, uh, I, I've always been in some sort of business growing up, whether it be, you know, mowing people's lawns or whatever. So I really liked the business aspect. And um, so I, I, I actually started doing some in-home training um, and that kind of stuff and, and bought my first gym in 2002. And that was fall of 2002. And six months later, uh, we got a call to go to Iraq. Um, and so uh, here I had this, you know, this business I just bought. I think mm -hmm. I had three employees at the time. And I have had to basically say, here, here you go, wife. And here you go, father-in-law. And you know, this, this wow. year's run. And, uh, you know, luckily we didn't make it across the pond for one reason or another. We weren't meant to be there. But I was gone for about six months, and that was the that was the start of the, uh, you know, of, of my gym, and uh, it made it made it really tough. Um, it, it was, say. yeah. I mean, really had to uh, dig myself out of a hole um, from the start. Mm -hmm. And how did your wife and you said father-in-law had this? Yeah, father-in-law. Yeah, they, they weren't they weren't so happy about it. <laughs> 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 but they did it and they did a good job. So everything turned out just fine. Yeah. Wow. I can't even imagine here you get the, oh man, to get that phone call, getting mobilized. I, I wouldn't even all that. Okay. Let me slow it down. I do that yeah. a lot. That phone call is, you know, looks different for all of us. The phone call saying, you know, you're getting, you know, whether it's a phone call or someone telling you in person, it looks different mm -hmm. for all of us. And so, um, it's interesting to meet you and hear that like you had just overcame the fear and opened up your own business and then boom, you're getting sent. So way to persevere and continue you. on as you returned. Um, I, so having this behavioral change um, focus, what does it look like when people come into core fitness what does that look like for them? Because clearly it's not just, uh, you know, um, and an, a workout wrote up on the dry erase board. Uh, mm -hmm. to, if someone, it's interesting that you, ne Nebraska and Arizona is a part of your journey because they are both a part of mine as well. Um, oh, cool. I know. And now I'm in Illinois, but wait, if someone comes into core fitness in Arizona, um, and they really, they know how to work out. But they come to you because they know that they are totally mind screwing themselves and they're just not in a good place. Their, their behavior definitely needs change and their mindset needs change. So what does that look like for them if someone comes in and they seek your guidance? Yeah. So, I mean, if, if they're looking for coaching, um, I'm going to find out what they want to do, what, what, what are their goals? Obviously that's, that's, um, you know, first, first step we got to figure out is which path are we going to go on? Mm -hmm. I really want to find out, um, where they are in that path. Um, there is something called the trans theoretical stage of change model. And basically there's, there's a lot, lot of, uh, the, the, the original trans theoretical change model had five steps. I think there's really six. Uh, step one's pre-contemplation. Those are the people that probably are not going to come to me yet. Those are the people that are like, no, I don't want to change. I have no, no desire to change, right? And then there's contemplation. There's people that are in contemplation. Those are the people like, yeah, maybe one day, right? Um, and then there's preparation there. So the preparation stage is probably where I'm going to see someone where they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at different programs and it might be yours. It might be someone down the street. But, you know, they're just trying to find what's a good fit for them. And where we probably will start working is in an action phase. So that's the person actually, you know, making a, a big commitment towards me and towards themselves, most importantly. And, uh, and actually starting the program. And, you know, action, the action phase could last like six months. And then the action or after the action phase is the maintenance phase. Mm hmm and the sixth, the sixth stage that I think is important to note is relapse. That's a good point. Put that in yeah. there. I mean, that's reality. Yeah. 
So, you know, a little story. I wasn't always the healthiest person, in the, you know. Um, I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't well, I wasn't born a personal trainer. And <laughs> I, used, <laughs> I used tobacco up until about age 30. And, um, you know, I, I, I think about the whole, you know, I, the stages I went through, you know, trying to quit and everything. And I mean, I was, I'd quit for a while, then I'd go back to it, quit for a while. And it was crazy. And finally, by age 30, I, I, I quit because we had our first child. And I decided, well, this is a good time to quit. And this, you know, this, I, have, I have a pretty strong reason why. Um, but I still relapsed a couple of times, like it happened, but I didn't, I didn't go back to the, um, to the habit of using it. I just relapsed. And so um, I could have told myself, well, hey, you know, this is, this is helpless. Like I'm helpless, like I can, hopeless, I can't do this. I, I, I might as well just be a tobacco user the rest of my life. I realized that what it was like I had a relapse and now I'm not using it anymore and like it's, I don't want to do that that's not who I am so right I think it's I think it's important for people to have give themselves grace when they do have that relapse and that way they can they can look at it as a relapse and not just a, a return to a habit that's going to be a, with them for the rest of their life yeah that's so important I love that you identified that yourself because that's reality in real life and and it's not something to give up on. And I'm glad you didn't give up. Yeah, Where thank you. you. <laughs> um, I'm kind of jumping around here because sure. I had wrote down something that I was going to ask you about. Um, so one of the things that um, I wanted to ask you <clears throat> I find it very admirable that you, while you were still active, you were already opening up your own business, which is good for you because I know as a lot of people transition out of the military, they find themselves like not knowing what to do. Or, um, you know, a lot of people think that we will be set up for success, be having been in the military, like, oh, you're going to have all these opportunities when really that's not exactly the case for everyone and most people. And so I wanted to know, like, since you had already went through all these efforts of opening up your own business and clearly where your passion was, did that help the transition from the military or did you, cause I know transition from the military is definitely like a hot topic, like a very difficult thing for a lot of people. Did it help your transition or do you still feel as though the transition from the military um, is challenging in its own, even if you're already set up with your own business after? Um, I'm going to say it's, it's challenging because I think you're right when you talk about how um, you come off of active duty and you're like, okay, well, you know, there's plenty of opportunities out there because I have this this or that type of training right and you know I, I was I was always in a medical unit so I was always around other medics mm -hmm. and um what they found when they came off active duty was um being a medic in in whether it be army or air force doesn't matter which was a um, EMT basic certification which meant you could drive an ambulance for, for about 15 bucks an hour Gotcha. And so yeah, I think it's a shock for a lot of people. And, and really, although most wild. medics, yeah, yeah, right. I mean, medics are pretty much trained at a, a paramedic level. Um, they would have to go on to become a paramedic, go through the, the, the training to become a paramedic to make like be a decent salary, a decent living. Right. Um, and I think, I think that kind of really messed with a lot of, uh, a lot of the medics heads that I knew that that really thought well that it would be easy to go out in the civilian world and just be a, a medic <laughs> yeah um for me personally I was I, I I did the military alongside um my civilian career so there was never really a transition mm -hmm. for me um I think I think looking back on it I have always I was always trying to I, I wasn't I wasn't so military focused that I was worried about my rank and 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 I mean I retired as as an E6 so like 
I wasn't, I wasn't climbing the rank ladder at all. But right. mostly the reason why was because I, I, I wanted to put the, put my effort, my time towards my business. I didn't want to put it necessarily towards the military. As I mean, I like putting it towards the military, but I didn't want to put a hundred percent of it towards the military. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. And so in hindsight, I kind of, you know, I'm a little upset with myself. I'm like, oh, it's just an E6. Like I should have gone much further. I had a bachelor's degree. I always passed my PT test, obviously. Like, um, you know, I was, I was a good soldier. Like, like there's, there's, I should have been at least an E7, maybe even an E8 if I would have really put my mind to it. But, um, but one of the things I found out about myself um, is that you can only put so much attention. You can only pay so much attention to one thing. And so I was paying more of my attention to my business than I was to the military. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's, that, you know, that's, that's one of those things I, I think um, I, I've met a lot of um, other veterans on, on Facebook and I, I see what they're doing. They, 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 they're, they're trying to do what, what I was doing. And they're, they're kind of, they do this, they do that, they do this, and, you know, and they start doing all these different things because you know, we're trained in the military to be basically like superhuman almost to, mm -hmm. to take on all these different challenges and like, and, and, you know, not, not, not back down and, you know, really, you know, and, and just do it. Right. And that, that's something that in the last few years, I've, I've really started to be careful of um, for myself because I realize I can't do everything and to do something well, I need to like keep my attention on one or two things, maybe three at most, um, and not five or ten things. Yeah. Oh my good grief! I was just saying this yesterday to my mother that speaking exactly to that. Um, and then, based on what you just said, that reminds me of a conversation I had. I believe it was last fall. And I was talking to a stranger. It was at a at a vendor event where I was posted up with um, with my book. I published my first book last summer, and so I was there with my books. And I had to swoop over and get this adorable wallet, of course. So as I'm purchasing this wallet, I was chatting it up with this uh, lady, and she was telling me about her sister, her sister in law, and basically it was one of those conversations where, um, very, very fantastic, kind woman, but she had made the point said, uh, you know, yes, I think my, my sister-in-law has PTSD because she, um, doesn't like fireworks and she's jumpy. And I always want to chat a little bit about that, but not D disregard people's feelings in their mind, you know, in their mindsets, society has definitely been focused on like PTSD is scared of fireworks and jumpiness, whereas it's actually a plethora of other things. And, um, one of the things through my research that I've done learning about post-traumatic stress, or it, maybe it's not even post-traumatic stress. Maybe it's, um, just that military mindset feeling as though like, you always got to do more. You got to do better. You got to do more, more, more. And so I had pointed out to her in that conversation that like one of the things that I've noticed that, that I had recently talked with someone in November, um, through the lone survivor foundation, they were, it was one of the counselors. They were talking about how that is a, a characteristic of people who struggle with that to, just always feel as though they need to do more. They need to serve more. And that was really interesting to me. And I love that you bring that up because that is a real thing, a real thing. So if, as far as core fitness and um, how people can get some help and guidance from you, is it um, outside of people that live in Arizona and live close to you and mm -hmm. the people that can come in there, what kind of guidance can people outside of Arizona get from you? Um, like if they follow you on your social media, which I already know the answer to this, will yeah. they, will they learn from you and be able to just get motivation, support, guidance, education? For sure. So there are several different uh, social media 
platforms. Uh, mostly I'm on Facebook. If you just type in Corey Scheidler, uh, you can find me. Uh, YouTube, same thing, Corey Scheidler. Uh, I'm not as much on Instagram, although I do have an Instagram account. And uh, it's just, I, I don't find Instagram to be quite as easy to use for my for me. But um, but I have plenty of, plenty of great um, articles and, and just tools that, that people can use for free. Um, you know, and if, if people are outside of Arizona, I, and here's something I really want to make clear is you don't have to meet with people in person anymore. I mean, I know a lot of people like to meet people in person, but this Zoom thing is, is great because my, my reach of people I can help is, is I don't want to say infinite, but it's, it's, it's <laughs> absolutely, it's, it, it, I mean, I can, I can, I can help people from a very far distance. And um, so there's no need to see me in person. I think a lot of people think, well, you have to be, you know, hip, um, hip to hip with your personal trainer while you're working out. And that's just not the case. Like mm -hmm. I have plenty of remote clients right now that they get, I think actually, I think the remote clients get better results. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll tell you the reason why is that they have they have more buy-in and they have more responsibility for getting those results. Yeah, I could see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think and a lot of times when people hire me as a personal trainer to work with out with them three days a week, they're they're giving me that um they're they're, they're giving me that responsibility for those three hours a week, mm -hmm. but they have all the other hours of the of the week that they still need to work on their habits right right and so if, if I, I just don't feel like they're as bought in as someone that's remote but. sure and I also if you were only doing hip to hip people next to you then you're not going to be able to serve and help as many people so I was yeah. kind of hoping your answer would include that because I wasn't sure whether you did the remote um, opportunities and and clearly you do and that's fantastic I have just a couple more questions for you. Yeah, sure. so one of the things that I very much value that I know um, a lot of people uh, and especially in your industry is that self-care is super important and valuable and can't help anyone else until you've helped yourself. Now, mm -hmm. I'm assuming some of your self-care is definitely um your own exercise and mental well-being, but kind of share with my listeners and those that are viewing, what do you do just for Corey and okay. your self, your self-care and to kind of sure. just build you up more, put the, put a little bit more back in your cup. Yeah, for sure. Um, I like to learn. I continue to, I, I get up between two and four every morning and that's my time to have my- that. What time do you go to sleep? Uh, eight, probably right, right around nine o'clock. Okay, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. So I get up, I have my coffee, and um, there's there's so much good information out there, whether it be an ebook or um, Audible or mm -hmm. YouTube has a ton of just great content. Um, I I I spend a lot of money on coaching programs, so I like to be coached as well as coach. Mm -hmm. um, but that's my time to really kind of work on my, my, my mind and, and my mindset and, and get more education. Mm -hmm. um, I, I work out on a very regular basis. I, I'm, I'm not. Okay. So here's one thing I think about working out and I think this is important. I don't think you have to go into work, go into the gym and crush yourself every workout. Um, I think that oftentimes leads to injuries. Um, Overuse, overuse injuries, it's happened to me quite a few times. And so I, I am a big proponent of moderate to moderate vigorous exercise, mm -hmm. um, but it's what you do on a daily basis. So I'd rather see someone work out 30 minutes a day, five days a week, than an hour and a half, three days a week. Absolutely. Which I think is probably about the same amount of time, but in any event, it's, you're gonna get a lot more out of it in, in, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then the, the third thing I'm really big on is nutrition. Um, I don't, I mean, although I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll eat the unhealthy foods, but it's, it's more of a rarity than it is a rule. My rule is I, I want to 
want to have a protein, a carbohydrate, and a vegetable for almost every meal. Yes. And that's such a huge portion of it. Nutrition, you could work out, but if you had poor diet, then you're still going to feel pretty trashy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. I had a brain fart for a minute. That's oh, right. your YouTube channel. I wanted to ask yeah. you, uh, our work, what is your like education on there? Training, uh, workouts. What is your YouTube? If someone was to go stalk you on your YouTube channel, what does that look like? So right now I'm just starting to build it mm -hmm. um, behind the scenes, unlisted. I have over 200 workout videos and those were created during COVID when, um, when, I mean, I was still working out with people in person, but I had a, a group of people that, that were working out on YouTube. And so we, I'm going to, I'm going to be releasing these videos um, over the next probably year. There's 200 of them. So there's, uh -huh. I mean, um, but there's there's plenty of workouts to do on there, and uh, and they're they're dumbbell style workouts, so body weight and dumbbell exercises. So as long as you have some hand weights or some dumb, dumbbells, you plenty of stuff you can do. Awesome, you know when you were talking about um, thirty minutes a day, moderate. I was thinking, okay, good. I'm falling in this category because I I tend to I keep dumbbells under my nightstand in my room and. Like, this is totally a mom workout here, which is totally fine. I have no shame yeah. in it, but I will dump out the whole basket of clean clothes and I'll fold some, well, and I'll, and, and then I'll even get some TV time, which is crazy, right? right? Like yeah. turn on an episode on Netflix, fold some clothes, do reps, fold clothes, do lunges, fold clothes, do reps. And, and it works for me and I yeah. dig it. <laughs> I dig it. So I'm. That's awesome. I know. And I'm, and it, it helps to build me up a little bit more knowing that even if I'm not getting to the gym and, you know, having a, a hit, hit workout or anything like right. that, that, that it's okay. And to give myself grace. No, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's great. And that's exactly what you got to do. I mean, my girls are grown now. Um, but you know, back when they were uh, young, um, that's what my wife had to do. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of times is just kind of to, to get her workout in when she could and uh, mm -hmm. you know she's she's really come a long ways um doing that over the course of 20 years and she's stuck with it. i'm really proud of her i'm actually I'm, my whole family like they all just kind of adopted this I was just gonna ask you. yeah yeah it's really cool my, my my oldest daughter will call me from college she'd be like hey what should i do for a workout today oh <laughs> that is cool. really cool yeah yeah and and a beautiful language of love yeah for sure uh, okay. So I kind of, here's my last question for you, unless I get off on a tangent and ask you more. Sure. I, and you kind of already shared a little bit, I feel like, uh, based on this, but I always like to ask people like, what are your, where, where do we see you going from here? What kinds of hopes and dreams do you have? Although I don't want to play down to like what you've clearly already accomplished. Right. Sure. So I don't say that in like, okay, Corey, you've done this. Now what, you know, I don't say it in right. that point, but I always want people to make sure that like, you always continue to allow yourself to go to that space to, mm -hmm. if there's something else. And so you, I feel like you kind of already touched on that saying, you know, you have this 200 videos ready to start releasing over, but what kind of, you've already clearly made quite an impact and found your passion, helping other people. What would you, if resources did not hinder you at all what would you like to potentially be able to tap into or or see in the future for yourself and or maybe yourself in core fitness or yourself sure. and family yeah no that's a great question um and i'm already actually starting to move down that road um 50 years old so i'm, I'm coming up on retirement somewhat soon you're 50 yes yep 50 wow. years old I just turned 50 you. yeah wow oh, thank you yeah halfway to 100 halfway half half time um so i'm i want to work through retirement um i want to be active um I, I think it's I, I for my clients i have a lot of older clients my oldest client's 96 and i can tell you what separates um the healthy um retirees from the not so healthy retirees is having something to get up and do every morning mm-hmm 
And the 96 year old spends a lot of time doing, um, well, he's a big golfer, he loves golf, but he also spends his time, he, he, he donates his time to charities and, and he goes out and he raises a lot of money for charities. And I think that's probably, those two things probably kept, kept him very healthy right. um, all of his life. Um, and even you know in his, in his later life. Um, so I'm, I'm actually training my staff again. I, 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 I say I'm, I'm building core fitness for the third time, right? So uh, first time was when I first opened it, I built it and then uh, the, the recession came along and that, that kind of crushed us. So I rebuilt it from there. Now after COVID, um, mm -hmm. rebuilding it from there again. So I have, a, I have a, a team that that I work with, and and what I'm doing is I'm training them on um, what I have done for the business all these years, and and what kind of stuff they have to do um, so that core fitness continues to be successful, and they can be successful, and that way it's just not a one man show. So I'm starting to transition my my knowledge of you know of what I've obtained over the last uh, 20 or 30 years to them. Uh, that way I can start to go off and I, I really see myself doing the remote coaching um, and consulting probably yeah. within the next five years. That's probably where most of my time will be spent. Mm -hmm. I, I love that your answer is that you're training others to help guide them in doing what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. It reminds me of the first of all, how admirable. And again, like, it's not about you and Corey and just a core fitness. It's about you help setting other people up for success so that they can be equipped to do that. But it reminds me of the quote and I'm totally, you're going to have to help me with it. What's the quote on like, teach a man to fish. Yeah. Are you, are you tracking? Yeah. Give a man to fish. Give a man a fish and like he eats for yeah. one and we teach a man to fish. So clear. I, yeah, I feel yes, like that. for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's totally clearly what you're doing. That's right. super cool. Yeah. Love and it. Core Love fitness, it. There's just such a great community there. Um, and, you know, when I bring in the right people, they, 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 they match well with the clients there and everything. And it's, you know, people really love that place. So mm -hmm. that's special. Well, this was fantastic, Corey. I appreciate you coming on here to share this with everyone because I, you know, um, success and happiness, all that doesn't just come out of the, the womb, right? You know, like, right. you, as you said, like, you've had to go through a whole lot of challenges. And, and if we're all, well, no, I shouldn't say that some of us are realistic knowing that like in the future, there's still going to be challenges and you just keep persevering through. And so I really appreciate you coming on to share all that with everyone. And that way it sends a little bit of hope to others that are thinking of um, whatever journey it is that they're looking at making. And so thank you for coming on to share that with us. And, oh, I'm going to put it on the show notes, but go ahead and give a little shout out as far as if people wanted to stalk you a little bit, learn from you, um, admire what you're doing and, uh, take something away from it. You said Instagram, um, Facebook, Corey Scheidler, uh, YouTube is, is YouTube Correct. under Corey Scheidler or core fitness? That's under Corey Scheidler. Okay. Yeah. Anything else that you want to throw in there? And if you forget, that's fine. We'll still put it in the show notes. No, that's all right. I mean, and if you want to contact me, you can always call or text me at 480-620-3000. And, uh, you know, if you, if you don't remember the phone number, just type in Corey Scheidler into Google. Like if you can't find me, then look. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your service. Over hey, you're welcome. Years. Thank That's you. Impressive. And um, keep it up. Way to go. Keep serving others and, yeah. and continuing to, you said it was trans theoretical, what? Trans theoretical uh, change model. I, I dig it. <laughs> well, thank you for educating me today and others and uh, coming on here I would say to get comfortable with the uncomfortable um, 
because, you know, talking about the struggles is uncomfortable, but the happy parts is just so fun to talk about. So thanks for coming on today and good luck with everything. Look forward to seeing uh, your hopes and dreams come true. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me on the podcast. Absolutely.